<laughs> All right. So today we're talking with frontman from Sidewalk Profits, Dave Fry. Dave, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I love that you have your band name <laughs> right above your head. <laughs> yeah, I got all sorts of like all these are things that fans made us. Our great big family, and uh, and I love it. I love yeah. Got like little uh, my favorite. I got this little. I don't know what what you call it. Like stuff that your mom would hang in her house, but <laughs> and then ping pong paddle. I mean, we're, I'm set. Like got all the accoutrements that Sidewalk that Profits awesome. ever need. <laughs> I was going to bring this up a little bit later in our conversation, but now feels right that I Perfect. think paying attention to the background in Sidewalk Profits videos right now is really mm -hmm. interesting. You guys are showing up like at the most awesome places from like beat up barns to yeah. very fancy stairways and architectural <laughs> landmarks. Like who is it's setting this up? Tell us about like your backgrounds lately have been awesome. Yeah, we're running the gambit. Um, you know, I think that uh, our, our newest record uh, that hasn't released yet, we don't know the exact release date, but uh, we're kind of releasing songs uh, little by little. And it's called Looking Up. And uh, we uh, decided to do a photo shoot in Chicago, which is, you know, my favorite. I'm a diehard Cubs fan. Grew up in Indiana, but Chicago holds a dear place to my heart. And we found this, like, super fancy staircase called The Rookery is the name of the building. And uh, it just this, this trippy, awesome place uh and it gives gives great metaphor uh looking up but also you're on a staircase going you can be going down or up or sideways or it's kind of like willy wonka and uh uh but but yeah we we uh we thought it was the perfect place to shoot a video called looking up because our cameraman could be shooting from the bottom to what you know with the, all the staircase above us and and uh and, and so we we did a music video there we did our photo shoot at the top of the sears tower uh and, which was unbelievable so you'll start seeing pictures of that I haven't got a music video up there yet but you never know and uh yeah and then we were out we had some days off in las vegas and that's that's not my favorite place to have days off so we went out to the desert and we found this you know beat up old barn this gorgeous like canyon and uh decided to shoot our, our video for hurt people out there uh and it kind of you're right it goes from like this fancy i'm wearing a suit and tie uh, on the staircase to the beat up old barn in the desert and uh we're running the game but we're trying to get uh you know uh, let everybody out there no matter where they're at uh uh understand and feel the feel the love so <laughs> i love that you even are thinking of the ways that it'll preach or be like sure. super symbolic other than just being cool yeah, I just thought That's it was right. a cool staircase or that it was like, you know, beat up barns are also cool. But uh, they are cool. Yeah. I love but that you're, you're thinking hurt, through it. You got that desert of your heart. You're feeling hurt. Uh, you might need a little little water and then you might, you know, you might walk for a little bit and then you'll get to a fancy staircase and everything will be good. Hey, or maybe you'll you find go. the that's, joy in the desert. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> that is so, oh, I love that, Dave. Uh, well, you. here's the, the thing. It's been like a few years, you know, since we've had yeah. new music from Sidewalk Profits. And yeah, I well, love that you know. the overwhelming response whenever I tell, like I told our staff or hearing from mm -hmm. listeners, that everyone, when they hear there's new music from Sidewalk Profits, the response has been the same, that they're like mm -hmm. relieved and it's been a while. Everyone says, oh, good, yeah. it's been a while. And so I've, I've had two kids, I think. <laughs> so, in that time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> I think my, my son was born right as our, our previous record came out, and now I have a, a nine-month-old daughter, and he's four. So, yeah, it's been been a while, and, and we're so excited uh, for people to get, to get to hear what God's been doing on our hearts while having kids. And uh, our, our lead guitarist had a kid, Ben, our, our manager had a kid. So uh, this is a it's not a, it's not a children's album, but <laughs> but it is an album influenced by uh, by all the things God has put in our hearts, uh, you know, these last three and a half, four years. So I would give the children's album a couple more years. Until mm -hmm. yeah, oh, I feel yeah. like it's, it's when the artist reaches the point where they're having to listen to the other artists on repeat because kids, yes. kids are repeat like incessantly. Yeah. And so yep. maybe we'll get your contribution to the children's music world in a matter That's of just a couple of years. I mean, we got a killer wheels on the bus cover that we got and we're working on Do some, uh, you know, hot cross buns. There's a lot of a lot of bangers out there that I forgot about until I had a four year old. So oh, <laughs> my four year old's great, though. He's been. He doesn't he's not one to listen incessantly to the same song, but he'll choose a genre like Disney songs. Mm -hmm. Like I he goes, Daddy, what's a Disney song I've never heard? I was like, 
boy, son, there's no Disney song. <laughs> like he's heard all of them. Every night he has me sing a new one, and I'm like, we're running. We're going to deep cuts. Last night I had to do Golden Afternoon from Alice in Wonderland. That's how deep these cuts. I know. I, I'd forgotten the lyrics, and uh, it'd been a hot minute. And uh, so we tried to. We're we're we're, we're pulling deep, but <laughs> wow. I love that. I love the way that kids stretch us. And that's just one they cute do. little example. And there's many more, I'm sure. Oh, but yeah. That definitely explains that. So that's a couple of kids for you personally and other members in the band in the past. Yeah. It's been about four years. Yeah. Uh, also, more recently, and this is super fresh, is that you made your Grand Ole Opry debut. Yeah, yeah. That was really special. That was my daughter's first concert. So she only knows that Daddy plays the Grand Ole Opry, which is pretty cool. Uh, and my son's first concert, we played the Ryman, which was – the original, you know, uh, where the Grand Ole Opry was originally filmed. So my kids only know uh, the, the pinnacles. So uh, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be, when we're playing Barnes, you know, like we're, we're talking about beat up old Barnes, they're going to be like, what's going on day. Uh, but, uh, uh, but all that being said, yeah, that was, I, I don't think I realized what a, an, a true, like, moment that would be because i didn't grow up a huge country music fan but i did grow up a fan of dolly parton and elvis and johnny cash all these people and to stand there in this circle uh on the grand Ole opry stage and realize all the people that had stood there but not just all the people that stood there but the people that stood there and and sang songs that inspired hearts that turned people to jesus as well like it, the, you know the, the opry began uh the the ryman was built because uh it was they needed a place for uh for people to come and feel welcome and loved and and know jesus and so it was a really cool heritage and once i I stepped out there. I was nervous. I was like, wow, this is way bigger than I thought. And uh, it was really, really uh, was such a special night uh, to get to do that and to get to do that in front of your mom and, and you know, friends that had driven in from all over the country. It was really, really special night. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations on that. Thank I mean, you. that just checks all the boxes of making yeah. for an amazing memory. Did everything go right? Everything go just as you hoped and dreamed? Uh, it did. Uh, so we 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 uh, teaming up with Megan Danielle for our song "Looking Up." She's an incredible. She was on American Idol. She uh, she was runner up. Uh, she's number one in our hearts. But uh, uh, Megan came out a little late. She missed her cue. But with you know you, you just roll with it. And she was so good. She she walked out and our bass player's like uh. And I about sang her part. And I was like no she's coming. And then my our bass player did this you know little circle of the finger move and uh and we just we just let it ride. Then she came out and just nailed it like it was like she just needed that you know sometimes you need that extra time just to to walk on out there and present yourself and uh and but it was so much that was the only snafu and it was like perfect nobody would have ever known and it gave, gave us a little more time to introduce her so it was and it was probably absolutely... a few extra butterflies in your heart <laughs> yeah it's, it get, there's there's yeah so in music there's you know bars like four bars is is a phrase and all these things and so there was a couple phrases where i was like i don't know if this is about to be the worst opera show of history and then it was perfect it was absolutely fine so uh but yeah we uh we had a yeah everything went pretty according to plan uh, as best we could um Awesome. Thanks in part to our bass player. Our, he's our music director and he he had us prepared. So <laughs> good. All right. Well, let's talk about the new song Hurt People. And you know, yeah. this is such a great, great phrase, hurt people, hurt people. I mean, I've heard that sure. first time I heard it was in church, and it was like this light bulb went, yeah. oh, that explains some of the behavior. Yeah. It, whether you're on the receiving end or right. the unfortunately sometimes the other end, but sure. I'm just so curious. Where did this song start in the writing process? I'll be completely honest. We wrote this before the pandemic, so like way back in 2019, and and it was uh, in the running for our last record. And I just didn't think that the the phrasing, like the the lyrics, weren't quite right. And uh, and so we went in. For this this newest record and my, my buddy ben our, our, he writes with me he's our manager and, and started the band he goes i just love this song like it, we got to make it right and so it literally took just one little tweak of a phrase and it was it almost like all the stars aligned. like god was like this is what i want you to do uh because this is a great time for it as well and i i think that uh you know in the, in the world we're living in man hurt is we throw it around man and and it's it's we also, you know, I you throw it around, especially behind a, um, you know, you, you're incognito when you're behind a screen. And so in that comment section, wherever you are, um, there's a lot of times where we, we say things that we, if we truly examined our heart, hopefully we don't really mean them or, or maybe we 
do. Uh, and it kind of just, uh, it, it's just this legacy of, of pain that gets passed down. And it's almost like a generational curse, if you will, of, of man, I was hurt. So I, I'm, I'm going to hurt you. Uh, and then sometimes you hurt yourself over and over again and you think you're not worth it. And so and then nobody else is worth it if you're not. And uh, it's just this this mindset that Satan just plants inside of us. And uh, it leads to a lot of can lead to a lot of terrifying things. Um, but uh, I, I know that the, the answer for me when I've been hurt in life, uh, when I've hurt myself in life, like the thing is is the love of Christ like the grace that he showed on the cross when you think about somebody that's been hurt i mean imagine being a perfect sinless person and you're crucified you you are killed for it because uh you're out there healing people and and making miracles happen and showing people what humbleness in the face of we were just talking about with my son like G, one of the Jesus the most powerful thing is he was the king of kings lord of lords and the most humble human that ever existed, like just loving the least of these. And, and it just overwhelms me uh, when I think about who Christ was and how he is the breaker of hurt, that that chain of hurt that goes down. And so that was the the hope that, that people would understand, like, no matter how you've been hurt in the past, man, today is the day when you can change it all uh, because Christ showed you in the midst of everyone that had hurt him hanging on that cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And that's the most, maybe the most powerful phrase that's ever been uttered in human history. And we have the ability to utter that phrase as well and to, to be that example. And it's incredibly hard uh, to, to retaliate, not with hurt, but with love and grace. Uh, but that's, that's where we are. And that's, that's who we've been called to be. Well, I love uh, that this song is out now in uh, mm. <laughs> a few yeah. years past the pan pandemic, sure. uh, some brutal election seasons yeah. and all kinds of other stuff. And as Absolutely. somebody who's making decisions to help program a radio station, when sure. I heard this song, I was like, yeah, right now this is what people need i also love that the song is upbeat it's happy sounding yeah, so, it is yeah it's not i mean it could have been a this could have been a slow <laughs> yeah. you know very sentimental kind of a sound yeah, but you sure. went with something else so what what about the decision there to keep the tempo yeah, you know I, up I, I i think when we you know when you think about some some real truths like my favorite bands growing up i loved listening to like audio adrenaline newsboys you know i loved uh when dc talk it, it would they, they would have some fun uh but they would say some really beautiful and and deep thing big house wasn't necessarily the most heart-tugging song <laughs> but like come to my father's house but uh but when you think of uh, i always thought that man sometimes the most important things you can say you can you can do it in a way that, that people don't don't even realize that they're kind of getting gut punched uh we had a song called smile that came out where it's like it sounds so happy and fun but it's really about the fact that man joy it's kind of like hurt people like choose joy like god is always waiting to give you joy uh but but uh, but it comes in a package that looks like uh looks like bubble gum a little bit and and i, I don't think this is necessarily bubble gum but at the same time like it's this up tempo we want people to feel connected to the to the the excitement of you can roll your windows down and drive to this song and and sing it at the top of your lungs and but at the same time you'll be singing truth you'll be singing the fact that that when we hurt each other it's only going to cause more hurt but when when we will let the love of christ uh be the thing that breaks those chains man it can change the world have you sung spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down to your son absolutely yet? okay <laughs> super cow fragilistic spoonful of sugar tim chimney uh yeah i'm thinking of all the mary poppins oh, songs so even good. uh feed the birds that was oh. walt, did you know that was walt disney's favorite song feed the birds top in the bag it's it's kind of a sad that's a sad song I'm talking about it is sad it's song. sad it's beautiful <laughs> sad and haunting i huh? do that one yeah. gets stuck in my head like they talk about what song lives rent free in your head and there's yeah. A few of those from Mary Poppins and a lot of them from Home Alone for some reason. Oh, John Williams' line. score is incredible on Home Alone, but yeah. But yeah, and, and Fly a Kite. I mean, there's. I think we've run down the gambit of Mary Poppins too, you're right. <laughs> okay, I, I figured. I figured I'd get a yes on that yeah, one. So we've talked one. a little bit about the title track, uh, but I know you've got a song coming out this Friday. Would yeah. you tell us about Come to Jesus? Yeah, Come to Jesus, man. 
it's it's a pretty simple song but it, but it's one that needed to be uh, be be heard you know and and we we wrote it with a good friend of ours and when he started to play it um uh we Ben and I uh he started to play the the just the the music and we're like man that's that music alone is tugging at something in my soul and we need to to come around this and and uh he had actually written the chorus and presented it to us. And there's a lot of times when people write things, they're like, do you want to write this? And you're like, man, I have to sing that for the rest of my life if we write this together. And, uh, and, but when he, when he played that, like Ben started tearing up, come to Jesus, his arms are open wide. There's kindness in his eyes. And speaking about something that we give, uh, we don't give enough credit, c kindness. And I preach on that a lot. Like Mr. Rogers is the man, like Fred Rogers would say the keys to success, the three keys are ki be kind, be kind, be kind. And I think that we forget about the kindness of Christ and how important that is. It walks hand in hand with the power of his grace and love. Uh, the kindness is an important part of that. And so I feel like come to Jesus is the opportunity to fall into the arms of kindness once again. And, and, and it's calling everybody, you know, uh, uh, much like our son Com come to the table did as well. Uh, this song is just a call for everyone uh, that's feeling weary. that's feeling uh, overwhelmed. It's a worship song just to say, come, come to Jesus. His arms are open wide uh, and, and fall, fall there. So we're excited for people to get to hear it and maybe even use it as a, a just a song of, of prayer in the morning. And uh, you know, I often find myself, uh, just just singing that to Christ and uh, um, just asking him uh, to, to to wrap his arms around me that day. Oh, I love it. I love the lyrics. <laughs> I love some of these building blocks like you're talking Mr. Rogers and we're talking a lot of Disney sure. stuff, kid <laughs> stuff. But know. some of these things are really important to remember yeah. through yeah. your entire life, the, you know, to be kind. Sure. That's something we need. And maybe I don't know if yeah. it's harder when we're an adult or not, honestly, but I think we, it's super we're, important. We're, like we've grown up, so we don't need it. Those yeah. lessons of childhood. And I, I think the reason they're lessons of childhood is hopefully to be building blocks for the rest of our lives. And and we often, man, we we get up to a point where we're like, hey, I'm I'm a parent now. I don't I don't need to listen to, you know, this ch ch advice I had as a kid. But no, that's the thing you need to pass on. And the thing, not only do you need to tell it, you need to to live it as best you can. And I think we often forgive forget that's so easy to tell and, and hard to live it. Uh, but man, yeah, those those uh, truths of childhood uh, remain truths of adulthood, and sometimes adults need them need to hear them even more. <laughs> Absolutely, oh, so so good. Well, we're looking forward to the Songs and Stories tour. You guys are going to be back. You've been here before. Can't yeah. wait to host you again at Landis Hall at the Junction Center, September twenty sixth. Tell us about the Songs and Stories tour. Man, it's it's been one of my favorite tours we've ever done. Uh, this is our will be our fall fall leg, and uh, I just get to sit back and uh, my buddy Cal is our bass player, and and my buddy Dan is our lead guitarist, and they have all of the pressure on them because we're looping things, and it's just the three of us, and uh, and and there's a lot, you know, you you think about th you know acoustic concert with with three guys, you're like, okay, I know what this is going to be. No, we have Dan plays the drums while playing bazooki uh, uh, on top of playing. <laughs> guitar at the same time and a little drum pad that he can do synthesize things cal's over there with the keyboards and bass at the same time pushing buttons on the computer so we can stack things on top of each other it is a complicated machine uh that's going on and it feels like a full band uh but so they're doing all this incredible musical wonderment and i just get to sing and tell stories <laughs> it's wonderful for me uh so i i'm, I'm super grateful for uh, for this tour because like you just it's it's just a, a chance it almost feels like you're walking into a family room and we're just hanging out and we we get to just hang and 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 talk to each other and 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 tell these stories behind our songs but also of of songs to come and and tales of the road and and all these wonderful things uh because man it's been a long journey we started the band you know, in 2001, I met my buddy Ben and we got signed to our record label in 09. And, and uh, it's been a long journey. But, man, we're so grateful we get to keep doing it and come to Pennsylvania and, and points, points between. And uh, super grateful for the Songs and Stories tour. Well, we have always loved the way Sidewalk Profits connects with people. It's always been one of your specialties. And uh, kind of unexplainably, there's something really really special there and so we love oh. that you're coming back and i love that you've got such timely new songs and just hearing that it's basically a circus for the other guys while you're on stage this yeah. is even <laughs> sounds is. like a show <laughs> there's, there's some people that are like man i can't take my eyes off of dan he's playing 
three things at the same time. He's like, uh, he's like, you know, when Mary Poppins coming back when uh, Dick Van Dyke's playing all the things at once. It's like Dan's pretty much Dick Van Dyke of the band for sure. <laughs> hey, if you're going to be an actor, that's the one to be. I yeah, mean, he's the man. man. So he cool. really is the man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for talking today, Dave. Cannot wait for the new music and for the surprise of when the release date is. Sounds like you don't know it either. I don't either, but we'll find out together. <laughs> but yeah, really looking forward to it. Thanks for chatting today. Thanks, Christy. Appreciate you. Love you guys.